Welcome all sports fans, YouTubers, Facebookers, all social media across the nation. Uneducated Network presents Uneducated Sports Talk, and I'm your host, Carlos Clayton. I got my main man, Brian Wilkinson, back once again for our college casual football talk. Now we can actually say playoff talk now. Playoff talk. Uh, because the playoffs are finally here. The top four has been selected. If you were living under a rock, it has been done. We're in the top four in just a few minutes. Uh, but before that, please like and subscribe to An Educated Network to where you see my show and many, many other shows on the docket. So please like and subscribe. Well, we are here. The uh, championship week is over with. Now we got a lot to talk about. So, my man B-Dub, go ahead. Let's talk about the championship games that happened. Uh, We'll start with small first. Let's say USC versus Stanford. Well, yeah, let's start with yeah. Friday. Yeah, that was the first game. That was the first game of the championship week. So let's go ahead and start with them. Uh, well played game. Yeah, on both sides. Uh, between both sides, very hard fought. I was uh, kind of shocked actually, which I probably shouldn't have been. I went back and looked at the the other game they played this mm-hmm. year, Stanford USC. Uh, also, very very well played game. Even though Stanford was down a, a couple of players in that game, right? Uh, and it they. Brought it down with the wire. It took USC a, a field goal, I believe, to finish this I, one off. I thought momentum from Stanford, you know, going into the game, that they were going to not easily beat USC, but, I mean, win. And uh, it just showed that, you know, out of all the, all the craziness USC has gone through this year, two losses on the resume. Yeah. That's it. Losses. And it feels like four. It feels like they had, like, four losses. Feels like I, I feel <coughs> like I, I just, I feel like they shouldn't, I don't know. I just, I just feel like I don't like... I, I, I want to find a reason for them not to be there, and they just, they're there. Right. It's just, they're, they're, that's they're, the kind they're, of season they had this year. Just, they're a win over Notre Dame for, like, actually being talked in about this top four. So, uh, how do you feel about this? And I mean, USC, do they make any kind of case for the playoffs at all? USC had a slight case. They did have three. <coughs> uh, they, they had three top 25 wins. Uh, they only lost two games on the schedule. Right. Uh, the biggest problem for USC – that blowout loss to Notre Dame. Uh, Notre Dame ended up not even being ranked in the top ten right. by championship week. Uh, I mean, I think just that single-handedly was uh, the the committee does look at your body of work and your docket, the how you played all of your games over the season. Uh, so you know they had that going against them a little bit too. But number one determining factor that that just horrific loss to Notre yep. Dame. Hey. Losses are looked at hard from the committee, as we know from a certain team we're going to talk about in a few. Uh, but they look at losses hard. And who you lost to and how you lost to them. So, uh, USC getting beat down by Notre Dame. You know. But, hey, at least they had the the quote-unquote Rose Bowl victory, but now they're part of the Cotton Bowl. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Yeah. Um, next game, uh, TCU versus Oklahoma. Basically, Oklahoma wins. They're in. TCU win, and, man, you have a good resume yeah. to get in. Uh, this one... Kind of with the way I thought it was going to go. Just the way Oklahoma's been <laughs> rolling. 41-17 yeah. to, uh, to in a game that was not close Never, at all. Not at one um, point in the game. Was it, it, it showed the Oklahoma was, they were kings of the Big 12. And uh, I'm kind of glad, and Oklahoma should be glad, that they had a championship game. Because mm-hmm. maybe without the championship game, you might get some whispering, some rumblings. Uh, I mean, maybe, but maybe I don't th- know they, so much they, after they hearing shut, yeah. well, after yeah. hearing this Sunday's talk. Maybe they might have still been a little good, but we'll get to that like right, we said right. later when we start talking about the top four. Uh, but yeah, Oklahoma wins and uh, they won, and they're they're definitely in. They're showing there was no problem, so you know that they're going to be in somehow. TCU, they just look like you know usually when it, when you get into the um, a neutral stadium, you know the better team is going to win the game. Most likely, if you're yeah. the better team. And more Oklahoma likely, showed it. Likely. They went at home in Oklahoma, then went to neutral field and did the same thing. Mm-hmm. So, um, no, Tisa didn't really have a chance after that. No, they're out. And Oklahoma is pretty much in. So, hey, that's one team we got in right now. Um, let's talk about what you want to talk about now. Uh, we'll go to the, one of the more interesting uh, kind of bad games that we had over the week. This, this week was kind of unpredictably very predictable. Right, it's kind right, of strange, right, but right. Auburn and Georgia – in the SEC championship game, I had Georgia winning. I had uh, Auburn. I didn't have the game. I didn't have the game going quite this way. Georgia just absolutely came out and dominated on defense. Um, Auburn came out in their game plan that they started with looked like they were definitely trying to protect right. Carry On Johnson. They, they didn't want to hurt him in the opening sort of series of the game. They were splitting up carries really well, and they were having some good success with it, which was kind of. Uh, I don't know why they sort of slid back towards him during, you know, getting close into the to the entry of the second half. They were right. just kind of trying to lean back on him. 
a little more than they were in the opening you know, series of the game, and it cost them. Uh, Georgia's defense came up with big time. turnovers, big, big time. time turnovers. Big time. I would have put more focus on the passing game. I mean, Stidham's there for a reason. Mm. He's a guy, and you know that your running back is running on two bad shoulders as it is, and you know, a couple shots here and there, he was favoring it big time. So I'm like, all right, get the guy out of there. Do a new game plan because uh, what you got going on is not working. Now, it's funny because it, it, it flipped from the last game when Georgia, the first game, right. Georgia came out like they were going to you know, tear it open, you know, the first series, and, you know, they scored, and then all of a sudden Auburn goes and takes control. Yeah. Well, by now it's another game, and Auburn comes out, gangbusters. They score yeah. the first. You're like, okay, well, Auburn's going to take control of this game slowly but surely. No, and it flips Georgia, and that defense came to play. Um, the running game and the running back, yeah, uh, uh, Chubbs and them, uh, what's his Chubbs name, Michelle? and Sonny Michelle. Yeah. Uh, Nick Chubb, by the way, for any of you stat heads that might be watching, has uh, slid behind only Herschel Walker, Herschel Walker in terms yeah. of total career yards yeah. in college football. In all of college football, total career yards. So that just goes to show you what kind of back this man is that he's been playing. You know, he's been he's been playing and since his freshman season under the radar. No one really talks about him when it comes out to NFL status. No yeah. one talks about Nick Chubb. But yeah, it's been very, very uh, durable. One, yes. uh, that's how you get all those yards. He's been durable, and uh, two, I mean, hey, he's, he's a great back. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they came in, they they took control, and this caught me by surprise. Uh, not that Georgia won, no, because I mean, we we thought we were kind of up and down. You were more on Georgia, and I was more on Auburn. But I could see Georgia winning. But how they won, uh, and the circumstances, because this is a playoff game before the right. playoff game. You you win, and you are definitely in, and you lose, you're out. Uh, uh, depending on, on those circumstances. But, yeah, you are definitely and out. And also, against that highly touted Auburn defense that yeah. we were talking so much about, the, the game-turning play was a, a game-busted 71-yard run from Mr. D, uh, DeMarie Smith, I believe yes, his yes, name yes. is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Georgia just went out with their ground game and said, stop us, and Auburn... That, basically, the hey, ground and pound. Now, do they have home field advantage? I mean, yes, but not really. It's, yeah. it's, I mean, like, it's home away from home, but it, I didn't really seem like it didn't seem like it was that big of a home crowd advantage because you still had a lot of right. Auburn fans go there. Uh, I just thought, you no, know, I always say this: neutral team, uh, neutral field, the better team wins. Maybe I think Georgia's just the better team. No, look, when they got yeah. to Auburn, they just got slacked up, and they're yeah. like, okay, well, all right, we weren't really ready for this, no. prepared for this. Uh, and you kind of figure if, if it was in Georgia, mm-hmm. it might have been the same way, but Georgia's way. Right. Right. So now you get on neutral field, the better team won, 28 to 7. So that basically told you Georgia's in with that one loss. Right. Auburn's out with three losses. Mm-hmm. Uh, Auburn could have been the best. You no. Know, people were saying Auburn would be the first two loss team, but I believe Ohio State was the first two loss team to get in no, the they, first year, right? No, they were actually only a one loss team. It just it happened so that the circumstances within their okay. within their division. I meant could that yeah, I, I thought they were two loss team. It, okay, it meant so that maybe. since it meant that since they lost to Penn State and they had the same uh in conference record okay. because Penn State lost an out of conference game, mm. but they only lost one in conference game. So because they had the same in conference standing and they won the head to head that they went with two losses instead of Ohio State with one. But mm. Ohio State eventually ended up going to the playoff. Uh, in a very similar scenario to what we're going to get right. ready to talk about after we finish the recap of the championship games here. Uh, well, we could talk about the, uh, I guess, the worst game of the, the worst game, of, The worst uh, game of the night. The, the most predictable, <laughs> uh, in, in my opinion, it was why I predicted this weeks ago, but Miami versus Clemson. Uh, after that loss to Pittsburgh, I just like it. Yeah, Miami's that mojo, that juju, that chain. It wasn't game. there anymore. It wasn't there anymore. It was just kind of, and you had the wrong, you took the wrong time to lose. Uh, before you know, facing Clemson. Yeah. Even though they tried to swag their way in, I don't know if you saw the the rise that they pulled up in. Man, they had a McLaren and a Bentley with right, a chain painted right. on the hood. No, I saw that. I saw that. Look, they, they, hey, it's Miami. <laughs> it's, it's all about the swag. They invented swag, right? They invented it. And, uh, oh man! Look, if they're gonna lose, they're gonna lose in style. And then they got blasted. <laughs> they got blasted. <laughs> the, but hey, the, <laughs> it's not it's not all bad for Miami. They do get to go to an Orange Bowl, so right. it's good to see Miami in the Orange Bowl again. And uh, with the demise of Florida State this season, look to Miami to kind of, I like on the, this uptrend that they've got going. Oh, well, if hey. they can start, if they can start sharpening iron versus iron play in these cleansing games, mm-hmm. they can sort of try to get back to that dominant Miami that they once were. The swag, the chain gang, that's all recruitment. That's all. It's just, it's just flash, just showing it. Like come back, because when Miami is one of those teams when they're good, the, the game is better. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're one of those rare teams, you know. Uh, 
So when they're when they're good, it's better for the game. I like so that. They, long and short, they did get blown out in a game that we all figured they would get blown out in. But Miami's still in a good place. Yeah, they yeah, get still a like very, they get a very good game. They're coming off of an incredible season. Uh, everything looks good for them moving forward. Yep, uh, Clemson just showed that they're just, in my opinion, they're the best team, top to bottom, offense, defense, special teams. Uh, they're special, and they even kept the game a little close because of their fault off of turnovers. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, I mean, it was dominant from the beginning. Uh, so we know that Clemson's in, uh, we know that Georgia's in, we know that Oklahoma's in. Now the game that Let's talk about. everyone was waiting for because we knew it had the biggest effect outside of the top four. Uh, it also ended up being the best game of the night. Yeah, as well. right, yeah, the best game of the night. Who would have thought it, huh? And I'll tell you why it's a problem. For a certain team, but Ohio State versus Wisconsin. Ohio State uh, and they're playing in uh, Lucas Oil Lucas Oil Stadium, uh, which is where the coach they're play at Indianapolis. Yeah, uh, and Ohio State wins twenty seven to twenty one in a very good game. Uh, is mm-hmm. look, I had Ohio State coming here and and putting their freaking foots on Wisconsin's throat because Wisconsin, as good a defense they play, uh, they haven't seen anyone with speed like Ohio State. And, and if it wasn't for one missed tackle, this could be a Wisconsin win. Right. No, you're on right. On that one breakaway run. You're right. You're on right. On that one breakaway run. Because they had him in the backfield, and a guy just whipped on a tackle and let him through the hole. But if that tackle gets made, we could be talking yeah. a whole different game. Uh, so Wisconsin comes in as kind of underdogs, even though they're undefeated. Uh, Ohio State does win 27-21, to but not in the kind of fashion that they would like it to be. Ohio State is your Big Ten champions. Uh, but at the same time, what they did, they, they didn't look good, in my opinion. And it, it shows you how, I'm not going to say how bad Wisconsin is, but right. yeah, but but not as good as Wisconsin yeah, really yeah, is, in my opinion. Say, quick question. It, is, did Ohio State, you know, is Ohio State that much better than Wisconsin? I mean, Wisconsin looked right. very good. So is no. Wisconsin, I don't think Wisconsin is really that bad. I... I yeah, I think Ohio State's that bad, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, it's, you think Wisconsin's that good because Ohio State might be that good, but I don't think Ohio State's that good, in my opinion. Um, you get beat by, I don't know, it felt like 40 <laughs> points against Iowa. Uh, I don't Almost. care. I, <laughs> I don't care what's going on. That's not, that, that's a horrible loss. And even a, a really, really good point. team doesn't lose by that amount in that no. fashion. It's like that they it, it, that game somewhere in that early third quarter they gave up, and the uh, the crew saw it. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But uh, Ohio State does win the championship, uh, Big Ten. But now the whole big talk about it is: is it Ohio State or is Alabama. it Alabama? And they are uh, back in the conversation now. Well, and uh, so we've given you one through three, right? Clemson. So well, we, we can tell them, go ahead, go tell them. Clemson, Oklahoma, and Georgia are your one through three. Let's go ahead and have our debate first, though, before Thank we you. reveal before we reveal who who actually made number four. Let's go ahead and have our debate. If this was you sitting in that room in uh, the Gaylord Texan Resort out there with the rest of the committee, who gets your vote and why? Oklahoma State or Alabama? Ohio State, but <laughs> Ohio State. I'm sorry, Ohio State. Those Oklahoma State. Oh yeah, they they were talked about what, week five of the season, <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I'm playing with you. Ohio State, uh, Ohio State, yeah. Alabama. Uh, I Ohio State, and Alabama. I was going with Bama all the way. Uh, yes, you can look at resumes out of the top twenty-five wins, and uh, I know that uh, Ohio State has more uh, quality wins. Uh, but at the same time, you only play who's in front of you. And mm-hmm. Bama, yes, their best winner is probably against the LSU team. They can easily have made an argument uh, that um, F- Florida State, we, we, right. we played them at the time where they were the third-ranked team in the nation, uh, and we, we played a decent game and still won it when they had their uh, Francois was mm-hmm. still the quarterback. So they can make that argument because no one was looking at that. Right. Uh, uh, no one thought about that till you know, till you got to think about it. Mm-hmm. But I chose Alabama only because of how bad I think Ohio State really is. Two factors. One, last year they came in the same scenario, got blown out by Clemson, 31 nothing. <laughs> no one wants to see it again. <laughs> two, well, three. Two, we know that if Bama's in, they're going to have a good performance and either make it close by losing or, or, or winning. But they're going to come out there and we know what to expect from Alabama. Uh, and then three, Ohio State got blown out by Iowa by that kind of fashion. I mean, yes, 
Alabama. Alabama lost to an Auburn team in Auburn the last game against a top 10 team uh, and lost by, you know what, by 13 points? Yeah. Something like that. So, all those factors in Ohio State, I just didn't like Ohio State. It, it, it wasn't that Alabama's well deserved to get it. I just think they're just more deserved than Ohio State, in my opinion. I think Ohio State is just a bad team. Uh, overall, we talk about the playoff wise. Mm -hmm. I didn't like Ohio State being in the playoffs. So, um, who would you have gone with? Well, it took everybody on the committee a night to go over it to make sure, you know, they Yeah, it they, right. they took um, the time. I like that. It took, it took me a little bit of time, too. Initially, I wanted to put I wanted to put Ohio State in at number four uh, because I want the weight on the – you know, if you if you have to divide teams, which you do because there are so many teams, right. if you have to divide teams, you know, the, the point of having the regular season and having people play for championship games mm -hmm. is that it's supposed to mean something. Yeah, yeah. So – as a conference champion of a Power Five conference, now if you're talking, you know, if you're talking about a conference champion of a, of a group of five conferences yeah, yeah. or something below that, you know, they don't have quite that much weight. They do get a, a more weight than they used to, but they don't have quite that much weight. But as a conference champion of a Power Five conference, uh, it's hard. And, and you can make this argument for USC too, which I hate to do. Uh, <laughs> uh, I feel you. I feel you. But both both of the teams having two losses, it would be a really interesting debate there as well, uh, particularly with. Ohio State, USC, and Alabama all being such large brand names in right. the landscape of college football. Uh, this was the one big debate that was missing from prior CFP. Mm -hmm. You know, it was always a big brand name versus a school that looked like they deserved to be in, but they didn't have that that history or background. Gotcha. Uh, which to me felt like a, a cop out on the committee's part because they they always wanted to be like, we want to put in the unquestionably best teams. But they still keep putting in those guys that just have right, names. Right. Uh, and part of that is because you know those guys are going to show up to play. But if you're supposed to be basing your decision on this year and mm -hmm. this year alone's body of work, some of those smaller guys deserve a nod. Right, right. right. Um, but after going back and thinking about it and watching the way that Ohio State has played coming through these last few games of the year and the way that Alabama played, yes, they did drop their final game of the season. Yes, they looked very bad in doing so. Mm -hmm. uh, Alabama is still just by that much, just by that much the better squad. Uh, the defense is much more solid at all three levels. Right. Their offense is uh, not quite as high powered, but is still solid enough that Jalen Hurts is not going to turn the ball over three right. to four no, you're, times you're the right way the that, way yeah. that J T Barrett is is capable, capable of doing and has yeah. shown he can do over the course of this season. I mean, he has some bad plays in that yeah. game too. Like some what are you doing kind of moments, folks. So yeah. looking at those kind of factors, Ohio State is just they don't quite make the cut as a squad. Uh yep. So uh I had Bama and he had Bama. And what did the committee decide? So did the committee. Alabama's Alabama is number four. Number four. Uh, so we have a matchups. Uh, we have Clemson versus Alabama. And then we have uh, Oklahoma versus Georgia. Clemson and Bama are playing in the Sugar Bowl and uh, Oklahoma and Georgia in the Rose Bowl, right? Right. We did All get right. a little bit of insight about that from uh, Mr. Kirk Herbstreet. Mm -hmm. the, whenever the committee does decide who is the number one squad, they try to schedule uh, whichever... Whichever the two, because the two sites are decided beforehand. So which, whichever the two sites is more geographically acceptable yes. for the number one team, uh -huh. they schedule them for that game. So that puts Clemson in the Sugar Bowl and Oklahoma in the Rose Bowl by default. By default, yeah. So two and three play each other and one and four play each other. That means Georgia, by virtue of being number three, is going to go out to the Rose Bowl, mm -hmm. uh, which kind of saddened my heart a little bit as I was watching this whole thing Why? because I'm a little bit of a traditionalist, and I just I like because I live. Down here in the southeast, I like seeing that SEC team in the Sugar Bowl. Oh. <laughs> so I was like, "Oh man, are we gonna get? Are we gonna get a Sugar Bowl with no SEC squad?" Well, I was wrong. They went for the rematch and put Bama in, so we will have an SEC team in the Sugar Bowl playing this season. Now, I'll tell you what, her Ohio State. Let's talk about why Ohio State didn't get in. We made our arguments, mm -hmm. but uh, the main thing is, if they would have took care of business against Wisconsin, remember what was this two years ago? They no last year. Two years they, ago. Uh, two years ago, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, no. Was it three years ago? The first one they had, the first they, when they won it all, um, they won it all uh, against uh, Oregon. Right. Uh, the first, right, uh, the right, first right, ever right. one. That that was the year that they went in and with Cardell Jones, but they blew out Wisconsin fifty nine to nothing. If you would have had something similar to that fashion, some some not not that bad. I mean, fifty nine, you don't get that every day. Mm -hmm. 
But something to where you win by you know, three touchdowns, four touchdowns, and it's kind of convincing when they get more eyebrows raised up to get into there. But with that performance, I think it's Wisconsin because from, from what they're looking at, what I'm, what I'm looking at, Wisconsin's not that good of a team. They just they, they just beat who's in their way, which is what all you can do is, is beat who's right. in your way. Ohio State, which we thought, and I thought it was a slightly better team than Wisconsin, I thought they would have won by two or three touchdowns. You only win five, six points, and Wisconsin had a chance to win the game. Right. Uh, and you're like, okay, that, that hurt them right there. Because, uh, one, like I said, Chasey Bear made some bad plays. It was just like boneheaded plays. And, uh, and Wisconsin's a tough team to watch, as it is already, but you kept them in the game, so I had to see Wisconsin on offense a lot more than I liked. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, outside of their running game, uh, you know, the, the lefty, I forgot his name, he's just, uh, it's tough to watch him play uh, at Wisconsin's offense when it comes out to the pass game. But anyways, um, that hurt them more than anything. They go out there and take care of business, win by three scores, or win convincingly in fashion, that kind of fashion. They might be in, uh, but just because... People are saying Bama isn't Bama we've seen. But outside of Ohio State and Bama, who else is going in there? Like, no one else is there. No, it ended yeah. up being, it ended up it, being that yeah. the top four teams yeah. were head and shoulders the, the top, above yeah. the rest. These, these, this is the top Once four again. teams. At the end of the day, out of all these weeks, I believe we got the right four in. Uh, no, pretty much period. And I'm going to give you the two reasons uh, that the committee went with on this decision that mm -hmm. uh, might make you change your mind about what you were just talking about okay. right there. Number one, on Ohio State's resume, like you were talking about earlier, the Iowa loss. They looked at that loss was a huge, huge determining factor in their decision and their blemish. The other interesting determining factor were Bama's injuries over the season. Right. Uh, now, they say that they don't look at this as who teams could have back going into the playoffs, which I don't buy. Uh, because guess what? Alabama's going to get those guys back on defense <laughs> right. going into this yeah. game. Uh, but, you know, they're looking at it saying, well, if Alabama had had their starting linebackers, right. they wouldn't have dropped any of those games, which I think is a flawed argument. That because is, that once is. again, if flawed. you're going to talk about we want to base this on this year's body of work, mm -hmm. those guys, and there's there's a big difference between the judging this by Alabama's linebackers being out and judging Clemson's loss by losing their quarterback. Because Kelly Bryant comes back the very next week to play the very next game. The two outside linebackers that Alabama lost in the first game of the season were both out for the entire year. Yeah. So there was no no option for them coming back. Right, was, right. That was, that was no chance. So, yes, they are a different squad without those two men on the field. But that is the squad that is – that's this year's squad. Right. So That's, that's who you're going to play with. So all that – would have, could have, if stuff right. got to go. Yeah, I feel on that. Yeah, uh, but uh, the, yeah, the other big turning factor, the the huge thirty-one point loss to yeah, that was uh, that was huge. Because I can't name I, I, going in memory back for the, the four years we've had the college playoffs. I mean, each team's worst loss wasn't by that. No, their uh, worst loss probably came by a touchdown or two at fact, the most. Had. Uh, uh, had Ohio State gone in this year, they would have beaten their own record for uh, worst loss to enter a championship. Okay. The worst loss that's ever been uh, sustained by a team to make it in the top four was 14 points. See, two yeah. touchdowns. Hey, so you, Ohio so, State lost uh, by two touchdowns. All right. Uh, I believe it was the first year that they got in. Okay. Uh, I believe it was they lost to Michigan. They lost They lost to Michigan by two touchdowns that year, but they went on to play the uh, championship, the Big Ten championship yeah. game, and they destroyed Wisconsin and they got in. Right. Well, you can't lose by 31 and get in. That's That was basically the committee can't. statement. You, you can't. cannot lose can't. by 31 can't. and get in. You can't. Uh, let's talk about the matches uh, pretty quickly. Uh, let's talk about uh, Oklahoma and Georgia. Um, I want to talk about that one because that's more uh, – uh, both games are interesting. Both games are going to be good in my opinion. Uh, Oklahoma versus Georgia, I'm very intrigued. Baker Mayfield versus his first real – Real stout defense. Uh, you know, uh, he faced Ohio State, but Ohio State was not defensively prepared at all this whole entire year, to be honest with you. Uh, so, Baker Mayfield versus a really, really good SEC defense. How do you think he fares out? Uh, uh, who you got winning? Yeah, so who who, out? who, who, who you do got I winning? have winning? Are your predictions? Uh, I don't see... I don't see Mr. Mayfield eclipsing 300 yards this game. Uh, two reasons. One... 
like you said, Georgia's defense, their guys on the outside can play with anybody in the country. Number two, Georgia is going to hold the ball. Why? Because uh, Oklahoma's defense is playing on a completely different level than Oklahoma's defense has played in the past. (laughs) Right, you're right about that. But they have not played this type of running attack. And not only have they not played this type of running attack, Georgia has two number one backs Mm -hmm. in Nick Chubb and Sonny Michelle. And then they got that third guy that can sneak in there. Dude, it's Mr. Smith. He's got some burst and he's got some speed. Jake Fromm can stand in there and throw the ball around if you know if need be. But I think Georgia's going to possess the ball. Georgia's going to play defense. They're going to play that SEC style. We're going to possess the ball. We're going to run. We're going to play defense. And I think it's going to suffocate Oklahoma a little bit. I don't think Baker's going to go over 300 yards this game. That being said, I'm only taking Georgia by a touchdown. Oh, okay. I'm only taking Georgia. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a fairly low scoring affair as okay. far as games. Yeah. Where Oklahoma is involved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm going to go with uh, Georgia repeating with another 28 spot to uh, Oklahoma's 21. So right. I'm calling it a touchdown 21 to 28 gotcha. in favor of Georgia. Well, I'm going with Georgia as well. I think Georgia, for all the reasons you've said pretty much, they're running game. One word for you gash. They're going to gash this Oklahoma's defense. Mm-hmm. Running, I'm talking like 15 yards here, 20 yards there. I can see it now. Uh, I see it more of a two touchdown to you no know, seventeen point kind of game. I see them winning thirty to like what, thirty to seventeen, something like that. Right. Some of that area, thirty to sixteen. I think they gash Oklahoma's defense, uh, the running game. I just think I don't see how Oklahoma plays because I see them get gashed by lesser teams. Uh-huh. You know, uh, you're talking about Kansas uh, State. Right. You know, gashing them. I I. I Kansas State and Georgia, that's two completely different programs, running styles. And Georgia, you know, they're going to smash them, I think. And I think they're going to show why um, SEC defense is, you know, not a fluke. No. People don't just whisper about it. It, it's, it means something. Uh, so, Baker Mayfield, as much as I like Baker Mayfield, he's my favorite player. I think he does get 300 yards passing. I think he All does. Right. I think that, but I think red zone. Where right. it's going to hurt them. Uh, uh, it's, instead of Bend know, but don't break. Yeah, Bend but, but don't break. They're gonna they're gonna give a yard, Georgia. Mm-hmm. But I think that in the red zone, they will somehow shut Baker Mayfield down in company. Uh and Mr. Anderson, who's going through a lot of off the field issues right now. Uh but uh, he's gonna be kind of uh, timid in this game, not really talked about. Side question. Heisman hangover for Mayfield, do you think he wins it? Oh, he wins it. Oh, he wins it. He wins it. Oh, a little, little bit of Heisman hangover there in the maybe, in the championship maybe, game? maybe. Uh, I'm gonna say no. I'm All gonna right. say no. I'm gonna just say that right. Georgia's just a better team than Oklahoma. Right. I'm gonna go there. Not I, it won't be because of him having the Heisman hangover. Right. Well, uh, and the next game. Let's check out the other game. Clemson, Clemson versus Clemson three. Whew. One. Let me let me start off by saying this. I'll let you have it. I did not like that they put this matchup. I in my mind, I thought Bama was gonna be number three. I thought they were going with Oklahoma, uh, uh, Bama. And in Clemson, Georgia, one I think Bama. And some craziness about me, and, and I might I know I'm probably wrong, but I think Bama's still slightly better than Georgia. Uh, but so I thought the committee was like, we're gonna put Bama number three because we want to see part three of the rematch for the championship. But no, they went they went their way, and I'm, I'm kudos to them. They stuck to their guns and made Bama number four to play Clemson. So that's I wanted to, I wanted to see them play the championship game because I, I think in my opinion well, they're still the two better teams. That, that right there is also the committee giving their nod to championships. Right. Because it's Georgia right. won right. the SEC championship. Bama did not. That's right. Therefore, Georgia gets to be number yeah, three. Yeah, so big kudos to them because I uh, went with a whole other round. I would made everybody mad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Go ahead. I like the rematch. I like it in the semifinals. Uh, we've had two years in a row the right. Bama Clemson in the national championship game. Both fantastic, both fantastic contests. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't mind seeing it a third time, but in the end, this being a semifinal game is ultimately going to be good for college football right. because you everybody still gets their rematch, right? And then you get one of the two best squads of the past three years guaranteed into the championship right. game. No, you're right. And you know, like we were just talking about earlier on the other side of this game, the, in the Rose Bowl, man, neither of those two teams are slouches either. So you're still going to get a fantastic, what I believe will still be a fantastic uh, championship game, regardless of whether Oklahoma predicts, you know, proves us wrong or Georgia comes right. in and proves us right. right. Regardless, I think either of those matchup possibilities, we're still going to get a very good championship game. So I believe that this is nothing but good for college football. Right. Uh, as a first off, the difference the last. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No. Go ahead. The difference the last two years is now that uh, 
they have two weeks to prepare now instead of mm -hmm. one week for it. But everyone's thinking the advantage is Nick Saban. I understand. I think there's advantage of the Davos Sweeney uh, because back in three years ago, they were kind of the underdogs. And now they've gotten their recruiting class where they, I think they look so much better than uh, Alabama. And am I wrong for thinking that Clemson's going to come out there and just destroy Bama? Am I wrong about that? I think I am wrong, but I got a feeling. I think when, when I say destroy, I'm talking like 14 yeah. points or more, not yeah. like, you know, by 40. It's not about to happen. No. Uh, I think Clemson will come out very dominant. I do think so. Uh, two touchdowns, two touchdowns. I'm going to two touchdowns. Two I'm, touchdowns, probably not. I'm thinking 10 points. I'm still thinking double digits. I'm still thinking 10 points, but I'm not thinking two whole touchdowns. And uh, I give you a score 28 to 17. 28 to 17. Clemson wins 28 to 17. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking Clemson is going to come out on top of this one uh, because of the aforementioned injuries. Uh, last time Bama was out, they just looked kind of out of sorts. Right. They were making, they were committing penalties. They were having trouble. If you thought Auburn was tough, up. wait till you see Clemson. They were having trouble <laughs> holding the pocket up was the right. biggest one. Now, Bama and Nick Saban are not going to go down without a fight. He's, you know, he's in that offensive right. line locker room. You know, today, let's go, like guys, we have to pick this <laughs> up. I, you know, nothing but the best, right. So he's gonna have those guys ready to play. I'm thinking ten points. Okay. I'm thinking ten no, points. I'm, we're thinking the same. So in that area. Uh, well, if you ask me and Brian, we both say that it's gonna be uh, Clemson versus Georgia in the finals. We don't know though. Uh, next episode, we're gonna break down all the New Year's Six games and the games before that as well. Uh, so stay tuned for that on our next episode. Um, Hey, it's been a good, good, good college year. We enjoyed it so good, much. It's been a good year. Uh, real quick. Uh, is it time for eight, eight, uh, eight teams? Yes or no? Yes, it's time yeah. for eight teams. Time for eight teams, yeah. So we can't wait. We had a uh, blast doing this. We'll come back next episode, break down all the games uh, for the New Year's Six and all the above, man. So for Brian, B. Dub Wilkinson, I'm your host, Carlos Clayton. Uneducated Never Presents Uneducated Sports Talk. You know what, fans? You know what time it is. Stay smart, stay educated. Peace.